Hey everyone, in this video I am going to tell the story on how I found my passion for photography. So let's get right into the story. So back in 2017, I was at my friend's cottage, which is about three quarters of the way to Tobermory, and I decided, why not go to the Bruce Peninsula National Park while I'm up there? So me and my friend decided to go to this park, and when we got there, I was blown away by the scenery. Like I had never seen anything so beautiful in my life. So I decided to snap a few shots on my phone and later on I had decided to edit those photos in the editing section on Instagram. And if you ask me today, I personally I don't really I'm not I'm not the biggest fan of those photos, but at the time I thought that I had done a really good job putting a edit on these photos. So I had posted them on my Instagram. I had never posted them anywhere else. Um, I'll post them up on the screen here so that way you guys can see all the photos that I'm talking about. So several months had passed and I hadn't taken any more photos because at the time I didn't even intend on taking photos. At, at the Bruce Peninsula National Park. I, I just snapped a few shots on my phone because of how beautiful the scenery was. So several months had passed and I had not taken any photos since I had been to the Bruce Peninsula National Park because even at the time when I was there, I didn't even intend on taking any photos. I just snapped a few shots off with my phone because I loved the beautiful scenery. So come February of 2018, my uncle had invited me and the whole family to his wedding, which was in Alberta. So I thought to myself, if I'm going to Alberta, then I want to see the Rocky Mountains. So I talked to my mom and she was completely down to go exploring through Jasper and Banff. So I thought to myself, I want a decent camera for when we go out there. So I went on Amazon and I started looking at cameras and I started doing a ton of research on good beginner cameras and I decided to buy my first camera. And it came with two lenses which was like the basic wide angle that zoomed in a little bit and then it also came with a telephoto lens which allowed me to capture some wildlife and everything. And then I also bought like a basic portrait lens because at the time I didn't know if I was going to get into portraits or not. I, I've tried portraits. It turns out I'm, I'm, I've been told I'm good at it, but I don't really enjoy it enough to keep going with it. So I don't really do portrait photography that often unless if it's for family or something, then, then I'll do it. But So I had told myself that I wanted to learn how to use this camera properly before I went to Alberta. So I started doing all kinds of research on photography and how to use a camera and all the different types of photography and I started learning how to use my camera and by the time that we went to Alberta I had not spent enough time learning and I pretty much shot every photo except for a couple. There was one that I can think of off the top of my head that was entirely shot in manual and I thought I did a pretty good job on this photo. I'll pop it up on the screen so you guys can see it. But other than that one photo, all of them are shot in auto because I, I could not keep up with it to, to change all my settings, like going in and out of the shade, like with constant light changes and everything. It was just too much for me at the time. I, I hadn't practiced enough. So <laughs> I come back from Alberta and Honestly, I, I didn't even like any of the photos and it wasn't entirely because I was taking bad photos But unfortunately There was a lot of smoke from wildfires that were going on in British Columbia So that being said, I do plan on going back to Alberta as soon as I can But with all these restrictions and everything, it's it's pretty difficult So hopefully I'll get to Alberta this year, but I can't guarantee anything. After I got back from Alberta, I still hadn't realized that I had a passion for photography. 
it was just the Alberta trip that got me to purchase the camera and the, the three lenses that I had with it. And a good six months had gone by and I hadn't touched my camera. It just sat in my room collecting dust, doing nothing for six whole months. And one night I had decided that I wanted to go for a little ride out to Erio and I walked outside and I just happened to look up at the sky and it was already dark out at this time it was probably about 10 o'clock at night and I looked up at the sky and I noticed it was crystal clear like super clear night so I decided why not bring the camera to Erio so I did and this was in the middle of March of 2019 and the, like Lake Erie was frozen quite a bit and I, I was able to walk out a fair ways on, off the beach. It was probably about three quarters of the way down the pier I walked out. If you, you've been to Erio then you know what I'm talking about. I had my tripod and everything with me. Luckily at the time I didn't even know that you needed a tripod for astrophotography but luckily I did have a tripod with me so I'll give myself that. <laughs> I was a complete rookie at the time and I remember I set my camera up on this tripod and I pointed it up at the sky and I was trying to take photos of these stars and I couldn't figure out why I wasn't able to even see any of the stars, let alone anything at all. Like it was just a completely dark photo. So <laughs> I went on YouTube on my phone, luckily I had data at the time, and I looked up a quick tutorial on how to take pictures of the stars. Turns out it's a lot more difficult than you'd think but watching this tutorial I just followed all the steps and turns out that you need the tripod and you need to set up a long exposure and everything else if, if you're a photographer that that has done astrophotography you know it's it's not just the simplest pointing your camera at the sky and, and taking a photo it, it's there's there's quite a few steps involved when it comes to a star photo so after I had followed these steps I was absolutely blown away at the photos that I was getting of these stars because there's one thing about a camera sensor in low light and that's that it can see more stars than you can see with your naked eye and it is unreal how many stars that I was able to capture with my camera. So I went home that night and I, I was looking at these photos and I just loved it. So the next day I decided to post this photo on Facebook. And it didn't even get that many likes. I think it got like less than 30 likes and 20 something comments. But at the time, I had never seen that many likes on my Facebook before. So just to think that that many people had enjoyed my photo enough to click the like button convinced me to continue going out taking photos every single weekend that I had available and it just turned into like a big time snowball effect it just my passion just kept on getting stronger and stronger every single weekend that I would go out adventuring taking photos of landscapes and here we are <laughs> I I absolutely fell in love with it in, in no time as, as soon as I as soon as I seen these people on Facebook had had truly enjoyed my work I just wanted to keep on posting these photos on Facebook and, and Instagram. It's not even that I do it for other people to see it. I do it because I, I genuinely love doing it. I love being out in nature. I love snapping photos of this nature. And I love the fact that I'm able to inspire other people with my photos. So there's a lot of things about photography that I love doing. and. Honestly, I don't think I'm ever gonna stop. I, I, I love doing it way too much. So yeah, that's essentially the whole story on how I found my passion for photography. All just because I decided to grab the camera one night and go to Erio. So my journey started in Erio and that place will always have a near and dear place in my heart. I'm constantly in Erio. If you look through my, my photos, you'll see there's always photos from Erio in there. It's an absolute gem of a spot to go to. Had I not decided to take the camera with me that night, I honestly don't know that I would have found my passion for photography. And 
in case if any of you are wondering what photo that might be, it is that photo that is hanging up on my wall right there. I decided to get it printed because that photo, even though it's nowhere near my best photo, I've gotten a lot better since then. But it is the photo that means the most to me because that is what made me realize that I have a passion for photography. So that is actually the only photo that I have printed in my whole apartment that is mine. So yeah guys, that's the story on how I found my passion for photography. If you like this video, then please leave a comment down below, like. Thanks for watching everyone.